there, this is Alex from the Phantom Buster team. Welcome to this tutorial for our Salesforce CRM Enricher Phantom. We've built this Phantom to help you automatically migrate contact data into your Salesforce CRM in a matter of seconds, whether that be data from your own database or data that you've collected with Phantom Buster. One thing to note before we go any further is that this Phantom will only work with certain Salesforce plans. So you can use this Phantom with a Salesforce developer account, or with a regular Salesforce account with an enterprise subscription plan or above. It will not work with the plans below because it needs to be able to use Salesforce API, which is only available with the enterprise plans and above. So as long as you have one of those subscription plans at the ready, let's get started by searching for the Phantom within our Phantom store. Just type Salesforce and there it is. And click on use this Phantom to get started. Once you reach the Phantom setup, you're going to need to give it some information in order to allow it to connect to your Salesforce account. And for this, you'll need your Salesforce username, password, and your Salesforce security token. And in order to get the security token, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this is my Salesforce account. As you can see, my contact table is entirely empty and we wanna change that. So you're going to click on the little avatar in the top right corner and settings. This will take you to your personal information and here is where you find your username, for example. And on the left hand side, if you scroll down, you'll find a reset my security token option in the sidebar. What you need to do is click on reset security token and this will send an email with a new security token to the email address that your account is under. Now I've already done that and I've entered my security token into my phantom setup just to show you what it will look like. Once you've entered all these details, you can click save and go to the next step. And this is where you're going to give the Phantom the contact information that you want to upload to your Salesforce. So you can either enter a URL of your own spreadsheet containing contact data, or you can use one of your Phantoms, which is what I'm going to do. So just click on the My Phantoms option to chain this Phantom to another Phantom you've used, such as a LinkedIn profile scraper, because this is going to contain all of my profile data that I've scraped from LinkedIn that I would like to upload to Salesforce. Now, as you can see, these fields have automatically populated, which is great, but in order to populate them yourself, if you want to use different column names, you're going to use the exact column titles that you find in your spreadsheet for the corresponding field. For example, if we go to my LinkedIn profile scraper results file, here, you'll see that we have our email column. We also have first name and last name, just as they're shown in the Phantoms setup. They've automatically populated there. If you'd like to use a different email column, you will find different columns in your input spreadsheet. For example, this mail from drop contact column is the column that you will get with our email discovery service. These are the professional emails that your Phantom has found using that service. So if you wanted to use those, you can use that title instead. As well as that, if you'd like to add any additional columns and information into your Salesforce CRM that aren't there in the Phantom setup, you can add your own properties. For example, company. So let me show you how to do that. At the bottom, you have an add more properties section where you just need to find the Salesforce object for the property as well as the column name. If you like, you can even create your own and I'll show you how to do that now. Back into your Salesforce account, you're going to click on the settings wheel and go to setup. Go to your object manager and scroll down until you see contact. You're going to click here, go to fields and relationships. And here you'll see all the available contact fields that you have. Now I want to add in company in here, so I'm going to do that by clicking on new. Scroll down and choose text, then hit next. And this is where you can label your field, for example, company. Choose the maximum length for the field, then click next. Scroll down again, click next and save. And you'll see here that your company field has been created and what you're going to need is the field name. Let's copy this just as it is, take it back to our phantom setup, paste it in here. Then we have a colon, space, and your column title, which was company, nice and easy. 
then click Save. And finally, you have the behavior step. This is where you can choose whether you would like to create new contacts only, update existing contacts only, or both create new and update existing contacts. So I'm going to keep this option, click Save and Save. And that's it, you are ready to launch your Phantom. Let's go. And the Phantom should only take a few seconds and once it's done, you'll see that a results file has appeared here, showing you all the contacts that have been sent to your Salesforce CRM. And if you don't believe me, you can go and check your Salesforce. Let's click on contacts and just going to view all contacts. And there you have it. My contacts have been uploaded to my Salesforce CRM. Now you may notice that the company field is not there. That's okay. We just need to choose to display it. So click on the settings wheel, go down to select fields to display. And of course, company. We'll move across. You can change the order if you like. Click save. And there it is. You've successfully connected your Phantom's data to your Salesforce CRM. And of course, you can continue to upload this data as your Phantoms gather new data by setting up repeated launches with your Phantom. But for now, enjoy using this one yourself. Don't forget to leave comments in the comments section of this video and subscribe to our channel for more tutorial videos in the future. Thanks for watching. See you soon.